All right, so in this video, I'm going to introduce the topic of a search cursor, what it is, when you would want to use it, how to use it, what the syntax is. Um, and to do that, let's just look at some of our data. So we have two shape files here. Let's just open up the cities, and we have all these features. Now, what a search cursor allows us to do is basically create a for loop that goes through a specified field. So if we wanted to loop through the name field, we could do that in a search cursor. We could set up the search cursor to have it go through this particular field and it would return all of these values. So search cursors allow you to loop through particular fields in shapefiles. That's that's what it boils down to. Um, and that can come in really come in handy when you wanted to do things uh, when you want to manipulate every single feature in a shapefile. Um, we could, right now, we could manipulate uh, different shape files in a for loop, but we couldn't actually manipulate individual features in feature classes. So say we had 10 feature classes. We could, in a for loop, convert all those 10, I mean, shape files. We could convert all those shape files to some different format. We can do that in a for loop, but we can't access the, uh, the actual features in those feature classes. If that, if that makes sense. Uh, we can't access them one by one. So we need a search cursor. So let's just get rid of what we have in here. And w all we're going to do is create a search cursor. And I actually I did it just to make sure I knew how to get the syntax right. We're just going to have it create or we're just going to have it loop through that name field and print out all the names of every feature in the city's shapefile. So what a search cursor looks like, it's kind of weird. Um, you want to start out and say with arcpy.da.search cursor in parentheses. And then you want to provide what do you want the search cursor to be made out of. Or like what, what do you want to loop through, what do you want to look at. Uh, we want to look at the points. Now remember when I said earlier some tools don't require a feature layer so this one you can just pop in that point we don't have to turn this into a feature layer um, so we just provide it with points separate it by comma and then square space square brackets in quotes this is the field that you're interested in so we know one's called name let's actually provide it with a couple name let's just go look at some other fields let's get like population pop max so you need to copy this exactly as it is. I usually just go like this. Pop that in here. Pop max. I don't know what... Pop min appears to be the same as... I don't understand that, so we'll skip that one. Um... Just get the time zone, why not? It's kind of interesting. Put it in quotes. And then, um, okay, now we have to basically create a variable. There are, there are different ways to make search cursors. This is one, this is my uh, preferred way. So now we make the actual search cursor. So with this function, with this parameter data as now you give it a name. I call it usually something cursor. So I'll call this one cities cursor colon enter. All right, so now we have the cursor set up. What do we want to do? So we want to loop through our new cursor. So for x, you can call this whatever, whatever you want. You can call it b. You can call it for um, city. I just, I don't know why, I like sticking with X for for loops. 4X in cities cursor. We want to print X. And here's where we're going to specify which one do you want to print. Let's just print 0. X1. And print X2. So this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So the first time it's going to go through for x in cities cursor, it's going to print whatever value the name happens to be. 
and then it's going to shift over and go to whatever pop max is and then time zone. So just to visualize that in arc, where's name? Right here. So when we print x0, it's going to print that. When we print x1, it's going to print whatever uh, pop max is. And then x2 was time zone. And then it's going to, that'll be the first iteration, then it's going to move on to the next one, then the next one, the next one. Um, I'm just going to add um, a new line here, just so it's more clear. What, this will just break it up so it'll be easier to read. Alright, so let's give this a try and see what happens. Oh, we got something wrong. Okay, I spelled search cursor wrong. S E H search cursor. Okay, so let's go take a look at what this output. Alright, so the first one is the name of the city or the country. Pop, max population, and then what was that? The time zone. All right, so that let's, we can open Arc just to confirm, but um, this is how it lined up. I remember. Um, so yeah, that's what a search cursor does. It's kind of confusing. It did confuse me for a little bit at first. Um, just the syntax of this width is kind of weird. I've used this before when I when I've I don't I don't remember, but there there is another use of width in Python, like it's a it's a thing that is used, I'm not sure why. Um, just a disclaimer, I'm not a Python expert, I'm just learning this as I go. So we can pull in uh, data countries. And you can take a look at the name field, it should be. Oh no, we we're looking at cities, oops. All right, see, there we go. So it makes sense. Um, so again, just to set this up with, and this is ArcPy and .da, that's like a, another sub pack. My understanding is it's like a, another sub package in ArcPy. So normally we do like ArcPy.select by location. This is ArcPy.da, which is specifying inside yet another sub package. And inside of that sub package, there's something called search cursor. And this search cursor takes an input. You can provide it with a variable like this, or you can make it a, a layer, uh, just whatever you want to look at. And then comma in square brackets, provide it with the names of the fields that you're interested in. And then as, and just name it whatever you want. Um, and in this case, we just looped through and printed these values. Now I think if you just printed X, it, it would print all three. I'm not positive. Let's just see. It would make sense if it printed all three values. All right. Yeah, so it prints them out in with that like Unicode thing there. Okay. All right, this is a good place to stop. In the next video, I think we're, we're we'll do something cool with each individual feature. We'll we'll make it do something unique. Alright, see you guys.